So you guys already know who I am, Erin Marie. So honored to be here. And of course, I have to tell you and remind you that I am your manifesto mentor, your purpose partner, your breakthrough bestie. It's Tuesday morning. We gonna get started. We gonna do this thing today. Many of you also know that this is the year of the new blessing. God gave me this in January and I really didn't know what it applied to. And what I feel and what I know is that one thing that it absolutely does is what I mentioned in our email last night, not remaining lukewarm, but being concentrated and being hot like I don't want lukewarm coffee I want hot coffee I want hot areas of my life anybody else say yes I want there to be some hotness in my relationships my finances my marriage every area of my life I don't want it to be lukewarm God doesn't want lukewarm so I don't want lukewarm so we are going to be focusing on bringing some hotness into our marriage and if you have a marriage, if you want a marriage, if you want your marriage to be better, we're going to be getting into it. God placed on my heart to do a pre-teaching prior to our prayer challenge opportunity in October. And so I'll be going live, not here, but through a link that you'll get when you register at Christian Marriage Network christian marriage framework excuse me dot com you'll get a link that allows you to register for september 5th the 12th or the 19th and all of those are going to be the exact same webinar so you can come to all of them or you can come to one look i'm going to say the same thing at each one people were like do i need to register for all of them is it a series no it's not a series y'all it is the same thing over and over again right so I'm so excited that we're going to get ready for this. So the, t the topic this quarter and what we've been talking about is trusting God, right? This is our trusting God series. If you have your journal, we are on page 145. And the title of that devotion is Ask for His Wisdom. And as you know, that's just the beginning. So our devotions are like the, they're not even like the appetizer. They're like the amuse-bouche before you even get to the appetizer. The devotion is like that nice wonderful little spoonful of deliciousness and then you come here for the main meal am i right about it J just give me some hearts just give me some hearts am i right about it the main meal is here in the podcast so you you can take the little amuse bouche you can take that little little sip that little bite right that is delicious and you can come here in the morning on tuesdays okay and yes, Nayala, I have my tea this morning. I see y'all acting up. We acting up already, but it's going to be good. So we've been talking a lot about trusting God. There's been so many trusting God topics. I honestly didn't plan on this. God just gives me the word that I'm supposed to share. So we've talked about trusting God through temptation, through transformation, through transition. We talked about trusting God through testing last week. If you didn't catch that, y'all. I had to go back and watch it again for myself, just for Aaron. I had to go back and watch it again. So today what we're doing is we're continuing this Trusting God series. And as you know, if you have the journal, that is section three in your journal. We are tracking with the journal week over week. So it's section three of your journal. We are in season three of this podcast. Everything matches and aligns. Today we're talking about trusting God's timing. So go ahead and pull your journal out. There's notes pages in this section of the week. So go ahead and write it down. Trusting God's timing. Trusting God's timing. The verse that I'm going to come to you today with just a, a quick chapter and verse comes from Psalms 137, 1 through 4. If you want to drop that in the chat, Psalms 137, 1 through 4. So I'm going to read it to you. It says, by the rivers of Babylon, we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. There on the poplars, we hung our harps, for there our captors asked us for songs. Our tormentors demanded songs of joy. They said, sing us one of the songs of Zion. Verse four says, how can we sing the songs of the Lord while in a foreign land? I'm gonna read verse four again. How can we sing the songs of the Lord while in a foreign land. Y'all, let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for your word, for your wisdom, for your will in our lives. God, for making a way out of no way, for being a wheel inside of a wheel. God, for being our everything. 
God, we ask right now that you remove us, our thoughts about this, our judgments, God, our proclivities. And Father, we ask that you sit right here in the midst of our presence, Father, even though we all are located somewhere different. God, you are the unifying bond. Bring us together with you. God, bring us to unify us together with you, God. Pull us in together with you, Father, so that we have an understanding, God, and where we don't have understanding, that we have peace that surpasses all understanding. God, we give you the glory and the honor today. Let this word be the word that you want for it to be in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Y'all say amen with me. Amen, amen, amen. So you guys know that I've given birth to two children, right? So when I was pregnant with my son, I had a very difficult pregnancy. It was really hard. I was sick all the time. It was just very stressful because I was working. And for half of my pregnancy almost, I didn't even know I was pregnant. I was so young. I was taking birth control. I thought that I was just tired. I didn't know until my fourth month, you guys, that I was pregnant, which was amazing, right? I was so sick and it was so hard and I just didn't know if I was going to be able to make it. So at 40 weeks, I was ready. Somebody say ready out loud. You don't have to type it in the chat. Just I was ready for him to be out. I was ready to give birth. I didn't even care about it anymore. I didn't know about, you know, whether I was scared. I brushed all that to the side. I was like, I'm ready for this baby to come out. But when 40 weeks came, nothing happened. Absolutely nothing happened. So my mom had me taking walks around the neighborhood. She was like, go outside and walk. So 41 weeks came. Nothing happened. No baby, no contractions, anything, right? So I was going to the doctor. He was like, okay, we are going to give it too much longer. Go home and do what you can do. So I was drinking herbal tea. I was doing yoga ball bouncing. You know how you bounce on that yoga ball? 42 weeks came. Nothing, okay? The doctor said, that's it. That's, that's all we're going to do. Go ahead and come in. We're going to take this baby out today. So I went in. They decided to induce labor. And 13 hours later, my son was born. But the number one question I was asking the entire time, y'all, was when. When, God? When is this going to happen? But the fact of the matter is, was that giving birth was inevitable. It was inevitable. I was going to give birth one way or another. He was going to come out. And I think that when we think about it, we have to realize, and I think some of you already know, if you have something deep inside of you that God has placed there, just continuing our conversation from last week, if God has placed something deep inside of you, it's going to come out, right? That purpose is going to come out. That desire is going to come out. It's going to be birthed into the world. It's inevitable. It's going to happen because I had a baby inside of me. And that baby was going to live outside of me. I have a promise inside of me. That promise is going to live outside of me. At some point, there was no choice about it. It was inevitable. The gift that's inside of me is going to make its way on the outside of me one way or another. It's inevitable. Somebody say it's inevitable. But the question that we often have when we're thinking about these issues, these problems, these challenges, the painful places, we're asking God, when? When? And I know I'm not the only one, all right? And I know I say that a lot, but this is a hot community, and I really think it helps other women when we showcase the fact that we are regular women. We struggle, too. You might be cute on the outside, but we all know, at least I know for me, I don't look like what I've been through. How many people can agree? I don't look like what I've been through. If I looked like what I've been through, y'all, thank God for the grace of God. I, I would look like I was beat down and torn up. But the Bible is so good because God says, he says, even though I take you through the fire and through the flood, what does he say? I'm bringing you out on the other side into what rich fulfillment? So he says, I'm taking you through fire. I'm taking you through flood, but I'm bringing you out on the other side into rich fulfillment. So we look good, right? We have makeup, face beat, right? Hair done, outfit cute, bag tight. All of this is good. It looks good. But if we think back to the times where we were going through the fire and through the flood, and some of us, it might be right now, you're asking God a question. 
You're asking. I know I was asking God a question. I asked God a question a lot of the times. And the question is, God, when? When is this going to be over? So we're talking about trusting God's timing today. For those of you who just joined, and I just need to know if that's you. I think I see a couple of people who agree with me that they've asked this question. We got a couple of hands. We got a couple of hearts. Okay, y'all talk to me this morning. Y'all know how we do. All right, don't make me come through this phone. That's what your mama used to say. Don't make me come through this phone. <laughs> the problem is we have something inside of us, right? That you know belongs outside of you. You know it. No one can tell you anything differently. And this desire inside of you is something that you know you're supposed to be experiencing on the outside of you. And even if you never experience it personally, some of us have such a deep knowing. And I talked about this in last night's Manifestor Monday email. Some of us have such a deep knowing. We've never seen it with our physical eyes, right? We've never seen it. We never even heard about it. But we just know it. Do you have something like that? Like, do you, have you ever experienced that personally where you have this intimate knowledge of something and you were just sure and sure enough it happened? But no one told you. No one informed you. You didn't see it on Facebook or on Instagram. No one gave you the idea. It's just like you were walking around month after month, for some of us, year after year, knowing that God had promised a certain thing, knowing that we have a desire that's deep down in our hearts, knowing that we really want something that we can't explain and we can't let go of it. And people have come against it and said, you need to just let go of that dream. People have said, you know what? I don't know what you're doing. They talking about you behind your back and in front of your face because you know how people do. People are like looking at you wondering what is she doing and why is she still believing in something that nobody's ever seen. But you know that this is what God has told you and is deep inside your heart. Yes. A couple of people say yes. Chantel says yes all the time. So I'm talking about a knowing that you really can't explain. And I'm talking to the woman with a vision this morning. The woman who has this vision that you've been carrying. You've been going to sleep with this vision. You've been waking up with this vision, right? Is there when you go to sleep? Is there when you wake, wake up and you know it intimately? You know this vision. You've desired to experience it. You've been carrying it, right? Talk to me this morning. You've been carrying it. Nobody else can carry it but you. And there's somebody on this call this morning that has even tried to forget it because it's taken too long. You've been asking God about his timing. You've been questioning God about when. And it's been taking too long for you. So you've decided that you're just going to try to forget about it. You've decided that I just can't take this tension anymore. The tension that exists within me where I know I have something that's supposed to be outside of me, but I can't yet hold it in my arms. God, why? Why is this happening? And when is it going to be over? There's a tension that we as believers have to get used to living with because the Bible once again says we walk by faith and not by sight, right? So we're walking in this direction. And God is like, I'm going to show it to you when it's time. But you have to trust my timing. You have to trust that I know what I'm doing and that you can't necessarily see everything that's happening. But we want to hold it in our arms so quickly. How many of you know that if I had wanted my son to come out any sooner, that he would have come out before he should have? And to be honest with you, I started getting sick around six months. Some of us have had babies at six months. And you know, most of the time, well, all the time, they can't go home. They have to stay in the NICU. It wouldn't have been good for me to give birth earlier. My baby wouldn't have been able to be as healthy as he is, right? He may not have even made it. So God says, I have a vision and I want to give it to you, but I have to trust that you can deal with the tension of holding it inside of your heart before you hold it in your arms. Can you deal with that tension? Because I'm trying to prepare the things around you, but I need for you to trust me that my timing won't delay. My timing won't deny. My timing is perfect, in fact, God says. So you've tried to forget it, but you can't forget it. 
You tried to forget it. You tried to tell yourself, well, I don't really want this. And you know you're lying to yourself, right? You feel the pull. And now tension exists not only between you and the vision. Tension exists between you and you. Because in your heart, you're like, I really want this. But your mind is like, mm -mm, it's hurt too bad. It's been too long. I've waited too long. It's been two years. It's been five years. We good for counting the years. We be telling God the years. Like God doesn't know how many years have passed. We're like, it's been 15 years, God. So your mind and your heart now are at odds. And now we have a double dose of tension inside of us. This is not healthy. This is not what God wants. Because that vision, you can't forget it, right? That vision keeps calling you. That vision is, is running after you every single day. And you can't forget about it because you're not the one who placed it there. You can't remove it because you're not the one who put it there. You can't take it out because you're not the one who put it in. God says, I'm the one who gave you that. I'm the one who gave you that desire. So we're not the only ones who dealt with this kind of dichotomy. We're not the only ones who deal with this kind of tension. I love this chapter in first in Psalms 137 because the psalmist here is recalling a time Okay, he's he's recalling a time. He's not in that time right now. He's recalling a time and he's thinking about how those people, his people were in captivity in Babylon. Okay, he's thinking about it and he's experiencing this deep sorrow. And he's thinking about how even though they were in captivity, that they remember Zion. They remember Zion. They were in Babylon, which was the place where they were enslaved, but they were thinking about something that they loved and desired to have. They were thinking about Zion. They were in Babylon, but they were thinking about Zion. They couldn't get Zion out of their hearts. Zion was the Lord's holy mountain, right? It was the place of those people. It was a fortress. It was where they were fulfilled, where they were safe. It was the land of the promises. And they were thinking about it over and over and over again. Does it sound familiar to anybody? So they were in a foreign land doing foreign things with thoughts about something that was not foreign to them. I'm going to say that again. They were in a foreign land doing foreign things with thoughts of things that honestly were not foreign to them, that they were intimately familiar with. They had it in their hearts, their minds, their mouths. The word says they were singing songs of Zion even while they were in this place. And I think if we think about it long and hard enough, we can think about the fact that maybe we've been in this job for a long time. We're, we're in this. We don't even like the job. We're in the job and we're doing things every day. You're counting the time because you know that God has placed a business inside of you. You know that he's given you a desire in your heart for something more entrepreneurial. But you're in a foreign land doing foreign things, thinking about the thing that you love. Some of us are in relationships that relationships are not where they need to be, right? And this could be a girlfriend relationship, a friendship, a marriage. And you are in this relationship, which feels foreign to you. It doesn't feel like it's a fulfillment of God's promise to you because you're looking around at the evidence and you really can't see it. You are in this relationship. It feels foreign. You're doing things that feel foreign to you, but you're thinking about God's promise. You're thinking about his holy mountain. You're thinking about the fortress, the deliverance. You're thinking about the promises. You're thinking about the vision that God has placed in your heart. So the thing I want you to know this morning is that you are normal. Sometimes I think we are, we think we're the only people who are dealing with these kinds of issues, but let's normalize the process of trusting God's timing. Can we just normalize the process of trusting God, period? Can we make that normal? Because if more people who were new to this understood that we ain't new to this, we true to this, God says, I'm true to this, I will bring you all the way in, even though you might be new to this, I'm going to be true to my word, my promises to you, and you are going to have to trust it. So if we could normalize it and just let people know, just remind ourselves even this morning that there's going to be a tension. It's a healthy tension. Sometimes that tension is good. Those last three months that I was pregnant with my son, that was good for him. It was the best thing for him. It was tension for me. But it was the best thing for the vision to be fulfilled. Some of you want 
the thing and you know you want it fully baked you don't want a halfway lukewarm blessing you don't want god to give you something that isn't already done but god said his promises we talked about this a couple of pods ago his promises are yes and amen so we have to sit with that knowledge and understanding that he's already said yes to the desire that he's placed in my heart and amen it shall be done right it is so so if we know this, why the problem? The problem is because of the tension. It's because of the time that it's taking to get there. So you're normal. Let's just normalize that. It's normal to feel this way. Because when I'm questioning God and I'm thinking about it and I'm talking to God in the morning and I'm asking him when, I'm wondering how can I get there now? How can I end this and get that? How can I be in this place and not that place, right? How can I experience a release of this tension? There's this conflict of interest because I get to leave this and move to that. I get to get out of this hard place so I can be in the soft place, right? Everyone talking about the soft life. Everyone wants this hashtag soft life, but the hard place sometimes is where we get to the soft life. I got to get out of this challenging situation so I can get to this comforting situation. I have to get out of this difficult thing so I can get to the easy thing. And the question becomes, God, when? So this is the thing about God that is beautiful. There's always a pattern. And I'm not saying that God isn't creative and that he can't move when he wants to move or that we should be able to anticipate his every move. But one thing that is so beautiful about God is that he leaves us breadcrumbs throughout the Bible. He leaves us these breadcrumbs throughout the Bible. He leaves us this trail. And if we pay attention to the word of God, we can see this beautiful trail. We can see this pattern. Because with God, there are patterns. There are many patterns of God. We've talked about it before, right? We've talked about this before. We've talked about the pattern of purpose. Do you guys remember that? When we said that God will take you, he will bless you, he breaks you, and then he uses you. Today, what we're going to talk about is the pattern of God's timing. Somebody write it down. Somebody say it out loud. There's a pattern. Somebody say it out loud. There's a pattern here. There's a pattern. So some of you know that I um, have a mother who taught herself how to sew. I've told this story before, but I'm going to tell it again because it's a good story. My mom, she used to make our Easter dresses and we were just matchy matchy all the time. She taught herself how to sew and she would pull out this big old fashioned sewing machine and then she would take us down to Joanne's Fabrics, right? And we would choose our pattern. So we would choose the pattern, the pattern would come in an envelope and we would go down the aisle looking at all the dresses on the front of the covers of these envelopes. Anybody else so know what I'm talking about? So once we chose the pattern, she would bring it home and she would lay the pattern paper, also called dot paper, out on the table. And she would choose the right size because there would be several sizes for the dress that were available. So if she would choose the right size, she would cut it out so that when she sewed it together, it would fit perfectly. It was custom made. Somebody say custom made. It was custom made. And the thing about it is with us is that God has shown us a pattern in our hearts. He placed it in our hearts. He gave us access to this pattern. He's showing us if we pay attention what he's doing. Just like my mom would take us to the store, let us walk down this aisle, choose this dress that we really wanted. And then she would bring it home and she would start working on it. The dress wasn't ready when she started working on it. But we knew the dress was coming, right? So we were excited about it. So the pattern, the steps in the pattern that I want to share with you today for God's timing is who, what, and when. Somebody write that down in your notes. Who, what, and when. Because there's a pattern that God has for us. And the steps in the pattern ensure that it's a perfect fit for us, right? For the vision coming to pass. The steps in the pattern ensure that when they are followed, that we'll be able to put on the thing. and It will look the way that it needs to look. The steps in the pattern make it custom made for us. So again, the pattern for God's timing, who, what, and when. Again, I'm not saying that God won't move because he will surprise you. We can't anticipate all of God's ways, but sometimes 
He shows us his patterns. Sometimes when we look at the word, we can see this pattern of God moving in such a way that we know and we can be assured that he's going to do what he said he would do. He would fulfill his promises to us because if he did it over there with that person and he did it over here in that Bible story and we saw that he did it for our best friend down the street, that means he can do it for us. But I, if I can just be real about it this morning, some of us have some imposter syndrome when it comes to God's pattern and his blessing because you see it happening to other people and you can praise God when it happens for other people, but you can't believe that it's happening for you. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but I just want you to dig deep inside of your heart and ask yourself, do I have an imposter syndrome around God's fulfillment of his promises? I've been carrying this vision at the same time I see somebody else carrying a vision. They were able to give birth to the vision, but I don't believe that it can happen for me. I don't believe that I'll ever be able to make enough money to save the way people say I'm supposed to save. I don't really believe that I'm going to have a marriage that fulfills my heart. I don't really believe that I'll ever meet the right person. I don't really believe that the friendships that I desire are ever going to happen. I wrote off girlfriend relationships a long time ago after my heart was broken. And that's the thing, because our hearts are in this thing. God has placed this vision and he's given it to us in our hearts. Where is the heart, y'all? It's right here. What does it stand for, y'all? It stands for the place and center of emotion, right? It stands for the place where I say I love you with all my heart. I'm saying that love is coming from my heart. When someone hurts my feelings, my heart hurts, right? My heart feels like it's going to break. I'm carrying this love in my heart for the things that God has fulfilled for me and the things that he is going to fulfill for me. But when I look at it closely for that one thing that I just think is just maybe too hard for God, I'm writing it off. Why is that? It's an imposter syndrome. So this morning, we're going to pray against that. We don't want to carry that with us, right? We don't need to have that in our lives because if God is going to do it for us, he is going to do it for us. And that is point blank, period. His word says it and that settles it. Amen. Amen. It is so. So the pattern again for God's timing, who, what, and when. And one point that I have for you today that I want you to write down to help understand God's timing is that the when comes after the what and the who. The when comes after the what and the who. God is a God of order, right? He's a God of patterns. He gives us the when after the what and the who are established. He puts those two things in place because he's like, these are the foundations for you being able to have the thing that I have said. So if you want to understand my timing, then look at how I move. And if we're women who move as God moves, right? That's what we've been saying for the last year. We're moving when God moves. Let's follow in his steps. Let's look at his steps today. So I only have one point today. The when comes after the what and the who. The when comes after the what and the who. So if we look at the Bible. The fact is you're going to get to the when after that what and who was established. And if I say it differently, God states the vision and then he chooses the person and then he establishes the time. So what God does is he states the vision, then he chooses the person and then he establishes the time. This is how he does it. Okay, so the when comes after that what and that who. So it was the what, the vision, the who, you, right? And the when is going to be the time. So he puts the vision in place first. Then he chooses the person and then he establishes the time. The Bible tells us this. We were praying yesterday in our eating. We pray every single Monday morning and God led me to a, a scripture. And the scripture talked about how God said that I have set it in place before the beginning of time for you. He set it in place. The vision was in place before the beginning of time. He said before time even began, I had this vision. I put it here. And then I chose you and I put you there. And then I bring it all together for an appointed time and for an appointed purpose. So I love how God moves. Just a couple of examples, y'all. In Exodus 6, God saw the wickedness of all the people in the world. He said, I need to fix this. I want to reform this. So he, he stated the vision. He's like, this isn't matching up with what I saw. This isn't matching up with what I said. So I'm going to fix this. He said, let me choose a person. And he chose Noah. 
And he said, Noah, I'm going to give you this vision. In chapter 7, verse 1, he actually says, the Lord said to Noah, go into the ark, you and your whole family, because I have found you righteous in this generation. So the wind was last. He said, go in verse one. He said, go. God said, go. So he saw a vision. He, he had a vision for a better world. He chose a person, Noah, and then he told him go. Right? So the wind comes after the what and the who. Let me give you another example. God knew that we wouldn't be able to save ourselves, right? He knew it. So out of this amazing vision called love, this vision that God had called love, the manifestation of his love in the world, he took the person, Jesus. He chose the person, his son, Jesus. And he said, go. He released him into the world to offer his life, to fulfill this vision of love that he had for us. The wind came after the what and the who. Are y'all following me? Are you with me this morning? Come on now. Because as I'm asking God, when God are you going to do this for me? God says, hold up one second. Did you see the what? And have you accepted that you are the who? Did you see the what? Do you have the vision in your heart? Some of you say, yes, I, I, I have the vision in my heart. Have you accepted that you are the who? That's my question for you this morning. Have you accepted that you are the who? Because if you are the who, that means you're going to have to do what God told Noah, what God told Abraham, what God told Esther, what God told even Jesus. You're going to have to go. If you are the who, you're going to have to go. If you want to get to the win, the win is the last step. So if I am holding this vision, and I'm just talking to those of us who seem like we're at a stalemate. We're trying to figure out when this is going to happen. I just want to know, have you accepted that you are the who? Do you believe that you are qualified? Do you sit at the table, even if you are shaken in your boots? Do you sit at the table and you say, I have a seat at this table? Do you go in and say the thing that you're supposed to say that you know God has been placed on your heart to say, but you haven't said? Have you accepted that you are the who? Have you gone? Because the thing is, people out here, influencers talking about grind, we got to grind, we got to grind. Yes, we have to grind. I, I do believe a little bit of that. Y'all know I don't buy in the hustle culture. But instead of grinding, I would just say, you got to go. You have to go. Because whenever God releases a vision into the world and chooses a person, the very next thing that happens is that person has to go. They have to go somewhere. God said, Abram, before he, he called him Abraham, he said, Abram. I, I want to show you this land. See, he cast the vision. You see this land. He said, as far as you can see, I'm going to give it to you. As far as you can see, I'm going to give it. He said, this is the vision. He said, now go. Because he was the person. And so Abraham had a choice. He could have just stood in that one location the entire time, looking at that vision out in the distance. I'm sure it was beautiful. I'm sure it was inspiring. I'm sure it was captivating. I'm sure it was moving. I'm sure when you sit down and tell me about your dream, that is, is, is beautiful. It's inspiring. It's captivating. It's moving. I'm sure that when you break down what God has placed in your heart, that you really mean it, that you really want it. But have you connected the vision to the fact that you are the one who has to go in order to bring it into fruition? So where is God telling you to go right now? Because that's what you got to do. And going is not easy. Y'all, going is not easy. Going isn't easy because it requires you to move sometimes when you don't see what's going to happen. It requires you to believe that you are the person. Even if you only believe the size of a mustard seed, it requires you to take that and to go. So the when comes after the what and the who, but if you are the who, you've got to go, okay? I can't really ignore the fact, as I think about the fact that God sends these people into this specific timing. He establishes this what and the who, and then he says, here's when it's going to happen. I really can't ignore the fact that the test was the last step last week, right? Do y'all remember that? The test was the last step. 
we talked about how gold was being processed and we established that it would go through some hot temperatures, right? It would go through some high pressures and then it had to be tested to see if it was pure gold. And I was, as I was thinking about this message, God was like, do you see the correlation? And I was like, what correlation? God, show me. This is so exciting. This is so fun. I love this. Let, let's dig into it. Show me. He said, last week, he said, I told you that the test was the last step. He said, this week, I'm telling you that the win is the last step. I was like, okay, God, all right. The test was the last step. The win was the last step. That's his timing, right? The win was the last step. Okay, God. And God said, no, 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 you're not getting it. There's a beautiful correlation between you passing the test and God saying go. There's a beautiful correlation between you passing the test and God saying your win is right now. There's a beautiful correlation between you passing the test and God saying go because your win is now. Your win is right now. If you miss the right now, you're going to miss the timing. I don't want to have to go back around, but God said, I want you to see that just because you pass the test doesn't mean that it's the end of the road. It actually is the beginning of your next. It's the beginning of your win. It's the beginning of you walking into the thing that God has for you. God is saying your win is now the future that we've been placing out into this faraway time. God said it's right now. This is the year of the new blessing right now. He wants for you to understand that this thing that we're moving into is not for a future time. It is for right now. God says it's right now. So you've been waiting, right? You've been working, You've been wanting, but have you gone? Because if you go, God says, I'm going to release it into your life right now. See, Noah, he passed the test when he built the ark, right? He passed the test when he built the ark. No one had ever even seen rain. He had a vision in his heart that people didn't even understand. And that's why you have to be careful who you tell your vision to. You can't tell your vision to everybody. That's why I'm so happy for the ladies who are in this community because I know I'm in a safe place. I know I can share with you what's on my heart because I'm safe in this place. I know you aren't going to judge me. You aren't going to look at my past and say, oh, look at what she did because we all understand that we all came from a past, right? But God is bringing us into the future, which is right now. He says, pass the test. See, Noah had told all these people his vision. They didn't understand it because they had never seen it. But he kept pressing forward and he passed the test. God said to Noah, your win is right now. How many of us know that Jesus also passed the test? Did he not? You better say yes to me this morning. Jesus said, I'm coming to earth. I'm going to pass this test. I know it's going to be difficult. I'm going to have to go because my father said go. He said, I'm going to give my life. He had a vision in his heart that people didn't understand. How do we know that people didn't understand it? Because the disciples questioned him all the time. The disciples were like, Jesus, why are you doing that? Even Peter, when they came to the garden to retrieve, Jesus, Peter was like, uh-uh, no. And he reached out and cut off that guard's ear with a sword. Peter was like, you're not going to take my savior. And Jesus said to Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. He was like, you are disturbing the mission. He said, do you not know that God created a vision called love? He cast this vision called love. Then he placed me in the earth. And when he did, I had a vision to fulfill. I'm trying to go, but you getting in my way. I came this far, but you getting in my way. He said, get thee behind me, Satan. Satan. You're not going to stop this vision from coming to pass. He pressed forward and he passed the test. God said to him, your win is now. Somebody needs to hear that today. Your win is now. Somebody needs to receive this word today that your win is right now. See, you have a vision in your heart. You, you have this vision and you try to tell people, but they don't see it. When you try to talk about it, they don't really understand it. You know you've been carrying this thing. And God says that I'm releasing you into it and you've had some hesitation. Some of you have said, I'm getting over this. I'm going to go ahead and go. And God says, that's fine. Keep on going because you're going to pass the test. And there's a beautiful correlation. When you pass the test, God says, you, you, God says go. That means that your win is right now. So I'm telling you today something. I'm telling you about your vision and about a promise that God has correlated with your vision. I want to tell you something today. God, help me to be able to say this the right way. 
I want to tell you that the word says in Habakkuk 2 and 3, it says that there is a vision and it's for an appointed time. The Bible actually says, though it tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. See, there's a vision and it's for an appointed time. People haven't seen this vision. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the hearts of man. All that God has for those who he loves. They don't see the vision. They don't understand it. And that's because God is the one who is fulfilling the vision because he's placed it inside of you and not inside of them. He's told you something that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. So what you have to do right now is to remember that you have to press forward. You've got to press forward. Just like we said last week, you've got to pass the test. Because when you pass the test, when you press forward into the blessing of God, when you do the thing that God says, when he says go, what you're going to hear next is that your win is now. Your win is now. Your win is now. Somebody should get happy about that this morning. Somebody should praise God this morning. Your win is right now. We can trust God's timing. We don't want this lukewarm blessing. We don't want the half-baked blessing. Your win is right now. So kudos to you for going when God said go. Let me give you a hand clap this morning because it wasn't easy. And I'm only saying that because y'all reply back to me in my emails. Some of y'all got my number and y'all be texting me all the time. And you're telling me these stories of how you have had to press. You're telling me these stories of how you've had to sacrifice. And you've gone. And you're right on the cusp because you passed the test, sis. You passed the test. We can trust God's timing today. Do you believe it? Say yes. If you believe it, I'm going to go ahead and pray us out. Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for your word this morning, for being a God who we can trust, for being a God whose timing is perfect and pure, for being a God who comes through beyond what we could have believed because our eyes hadn't seen it and our ears hadn't heard it. But yet in your omnipotence, God, in your faithfulness, you release it into our hearts. We have a knowledge of it. And there's a beautiful unfolding of it coming into our lives, God. As we have gone, I ask that you bless my sister. God, keep her right now in your will. God, as she is being tempted and tried and tested, going through transition and transformation. God, as she's going through all of these changes, Father, I ask that you hold on to her like an anchor in her soul, God, that you hold on to her, God, so she can't move to the right or to the left. God, keep her on the straight and narrow path. God, keep her moving in the right direction forward because she's about to pass the test. She's about to pass the test. And when she passes the test, God, the win is going to be right now. It won't be awaiting any longer, but the season is here and it's coming for a, a certain time. It's coming for a certain fulfillment. It's coming for this appointed time. And this appointed time is the time that you have set forth for us. So God, I thank you right now for being that God, that God. I thank you for being that God, the one that we can trust and depend on and rely on that we can trust your timing. We praise you and we thank you for all that you have done. We give you the glory, God. And when they see it, Father, when they see it, Lord, let us not take any credit for ourselves. Let us not take any credit for ourselves, but God, let us remember to give you the glory and the honor and the praise for all that you have done, all that you will do and all that you're doing right now. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 We can trust God's timing. We can trust God's timing. God is like, I got you. I got you. I have a God says for you this morning. I know I haven't read you a God says in a while, but these are when God speaks to me straight from my devotion. And there is a God says that I've had on the dockets and God said to tell you today. Okay. So this is a word for someone. This is what God says. He says, do you believe I would do for others that I wouldn't do for you? Do you believe that I would do for others what I wouldn't do for you? The power of what you believe is so strong that it can change your life. Capturing your mind in me and keeping my perspective in your mind is the litmus test for these thoughts. It is up to you to conceive, 
Many thoughts will come your way. You don't have to believe them. You can believe something completely different. And as long as you have staying power and can wait, it will happen. This is why I say, don't worry, just trust. Don't worry, just trust. That belief of worry underscores your power. You are powerful because you are practiced. God says you are powerful because you are practiced. That means that your fine tuning makes you aware and even stronger and you have the ability to stay on path. I won't let anything happen to you. You are safe, protected, guided, and loved all by me. That's what God said this morning. I hope that this blessed you this morning. It blesses me. I have a fulfillment in my heart. I have a fulfillment in my heart and there are visions I'm still carrying that I have not seen outside of me. But when I tell you they are inside of me and I see them so clearly and it's such a relief of pressure knowing that God placed them there. So that means that he has the onus to bring them to pass, not me. I just carry it. He's going to bring it to pass. It's inevitable. Just like giving birth was inevitable. It's inevitable. It's going to come to pass. So you guys, our announcements for today, I love you so much. Just know that. I love you so much. Our Renew Retreat and Conference private call happened last night, and I will be dropping the ability to register in this group on the 2nd of September. So excited. If you are an MHD Society, you can register right now. This is so much fun. I'm so excited about it. And of course, our prayer challenge for husbands that God released into my heart for October I already told you, y'all know, we have a masterclass. They're all the same, uh, September 5th, 12th, and 19th. I had to think about the date, September 5th, 12th, and 19th, okay? At 8 p.m. Eastern time, I will see you next Tuesday. Thank you for you guys who told me, yes, it's Tuesday. September 5th is Tuesday. The 12th is a Tuesday, and the 19th is a Tuesday. So I had to offer more because now I think we have over 350 women who are registered for that, so... It's going to be awesome. It's going to be rich. It's going to be luxe. All love is going to be luxe. It's going to be good. But anyway, I love you guys. And I thank you for your time this morning. I thank you all for rocking with me. I don't ever want to let y'all go. <laughs> I never want to let y'all go. I just be stalling. Can y'all tell? I'm stalling right now. But I hope you have a beautiful day. I love you. And I will see you again very soon. Bye, guys.